Karting, the grassroots battleground of motorsports, where aspiring champions ignite their passion, hone their craft, and race their way to the pinnacle of racing excellence. Karting is where many professional racers got their start. And with so many real life racers now using sim racing as a tool to be a better real life racer, it only makes sense that carters would have those same demands. So if karting is your main gig or your main focus of motorsport and you want to train on a sim, well then I introduce to you the Next Level Racing Go-Kart Plus. This is a $699 chassis, including the seat, that is specifically designed to mimic the driving style of a go-kart. The go-kart plus is entirely made of steel or metal and it has a nice finish on it, kind of a sparkly matte finish. And with exception to the plastic bumpers or bodywork in the world of karting and the seat, it is entirely made of metal. It does come with both flat feet that are adjustable or caster wheels, which are lockable, which is a really nice thing to have included in a $699 rig. It is an entirely adjustable chassis. You can adjust the seat front to back and multiple different angles. You can adjust the wheel deck up and down and multiple different angles. And you have almost endless range of motion front to back for the pedal tray, including four different angle adjustments to it. So lots of adjustability and that will make it so that it fits drivers anywhere from three foot seven. So a little kid all the way up to six foot seven. And that is very unique from a rig as well. The Go-Kart Plus is compatible with nearly all of the common gear on the market, which is an expanding list. So we're also talking modern direct drive wheels, and it will handle up to a 12 Newton meter wheelbase, which is remarkable for a center post design. Overall, it is a low slung, go-kart style rig with a small footprint, a sturdy design, and endless adjustability. When it comes to building the Go-Kart Plus, this was one of the easiest rigs of all time to build, and it wasn't even that pre-assembled. Certain parts were taken care of, but really you just have to kind of put the two front tubes together. The midsection just kind of joins in with that. The whole rear section is pre-assembled as far as the seat sliders go, and that just bolts to that now main section that you've put together. The pedal tray just goes on with the four threaded screw-on knobs. The bumpers are optional, but they just bolt on with a few extra bolts. And maybe the most complex part was putting the cage around the seat. But all in all, the instructions that come with it are extremely thorough. They cover everything that you need to know in good detail. There isn't a lot of confusion. And it does come with all of the tools that you're gonna need to put it together. So Next Level Racing makes that as painless as possible. And I'd say that even a novice DIYer could put this together in probably a half an hour, no problem. The other great thing about this chassis is it is really strong. So the way they did these tubular steel tubes, the way they lock together, the way the whole thing holds together on the ground with so many feet, the eight casters, or it's actually nine of the adjustable feet if you use the adjustable feet, makes for a really solid, rigid platform, even though it's lacking the upright of a conventional rig. The coating on it, it's interesting. I wanna call it a matte finish, but it's almost got a sparkliness to it, but it is a little bit of that rough finish versus polished. And you can see there are some threaded sections along the top and sides of the front section of the rig. And I wonder if Next Level Racing isn't planning for some kind of maybe monitor stand or some kind of other add-ons. I see a few more here in the mid section as well. Maybe an optional shifter mount, even though it is more of a cart than a GT style rig. But it is a nice construction. Overall, the footprint is pretty small. Even with the bumpers, you're looking at 68 inches long by 34 inches wide. And if you really want to minimize space, you can take the bumpers off and it is only 56 inches long by 20 and a half inches wide, which is as small a rig as I've ever tested. Another great feature of the Go-Kart Plus is it is really as compatible with gear as I've seen from anything. So in the instruction manual, they even have this cool diagram 
and it's showing you Moza, Fnatic, Logitech, Thrustmaster, Simucube, Sim Magic, Nintendo Mario Kart wheel even, and the Sim Experience AccuForce Pro. All of those are already pre-drilled into this wheel deck, so it's just bolt them on and set your angle and you're all done. The pedal tray, it is gonna work with all the main pedal sets out there. I use my Rickmo Tech set, which is a completely unconventional bolt pattern. And just by the way, they have so many of these cross channels cut into the pedal tray that it just allowed it to bolt on with four bolts. I think just about any pedal set will go on pretty easy. You might have to drill a couple of holes for some truly exotic pedals out there. But even the installation of the gear was easy. They give you some of these Velcro tie downs so you can get your cable routing really nice down the center post and along the side rails and up to your computer so it keeps it really clean. So again, the entire main chassis is completely metal except for the bumpers. When you get back to the seat, it is a plastic shell. It is very much that carding shape. So it comes in on the ribs, which means for larger drivers, they're probably gonna pop in or squeeze in. I'm about a 32 waist. I can get in and out rather easy, but I do feel it slightly cupping me and keeping me centralized in that seat. And it is only about mid shoulders in the back. It doesn't come all the way up your shoulder, no headrest obviously. And then you have some adjustment in the seat. The padding on the seat is very light. It's, it's much lighter than you'd expect from a typical racing seat or any reclining seat would have a lot more padding than what we're seeing here. And you've got this kind of suede stitched type. It's, it's synthetic, but it's suede-ish with the red stitching, which looks really nice and actually has kind of a carding or racer suit vibe. And then more of a leathery style uh, synthetic material on the side. So when you're getting in and out, you feel that and then more of a, a thick canvas type uh, material on the sides. And this whole thing just sort of tightens with some drawstrings onto the plastic shell. So that's the overall construction of the Go-Kart Plus. And then once everything is all finished on the rig, you just use those Velcro straps, make everything nice for the wiring. And then you got these cool customized stickers so you can put your number or you can put your name or your slogan anywhere on the rig, on the bumpers, on the tubing or somewhere and just kind of give it that total carding vibe. Also included with the chassis was a butt kicker mount that I didn't install for this review, but is a really nice add on to the rig. Okay, before we actually get down to driving the next level racing go-kart plus, I want to talk about its driving position. So clearly it's got that go-kart styling with the bumpers and the overall shape and the driving position. This actually really mimics my old go-kart very, very well. So starting off with that relaxed wheel angle, I was able to get the same angle height and distance. Again, it feels just like my old 125 shifter cart back in the day, including the seat angle and this whole relationship that being in the center of the cockpit, feeling like you're right in the middle in a really aggressive driving position. They nailed it perfectly. Now, the other part of the go-kart design is it is very low to the ground. So for some drivers, you would think it would be hard to get in and out of with it being so low. However, on the casters, it is a little bit higher than on the feet themselves. And on top of that, if you can get your hands on these sides, it is very easy to just lift yourself up and step over the wheel. You don't even have to look at it. You can just get in and out of the rig as long as you can touch those sides. So even though it's so low, it's actually the easiest rig for me to get in and out of. But then again, I'm not the tallest guy. Now with it being low, there are other advantages. I don't need any accessories like a, a keyboard holder. I have a keyboard holder, it's right there. It's called the ground. I don't need a mouse holder. It's right there on the ground, right where I need it next to me. So it's very easy in that respect as well. Before we actually get to driving, we'll talk a little bit more about the center post. So I, I've hammered rigs in the past for center post design because it's clearly in your way. It obstructs your ability to get to the pedals in a lot of cases, but usually those have been in GT or formula driving position. In a go-kart, the gas tank sits right here. There is a center post on a go-kart. There's no getting around that. And when I talk about that driving position and how this feels compared to my old days of shifter karting, 
Well, I used to have a gas tank here that would just barely touch my calves and my knees and my thighs. And for G-forces, it would hold me in place and help me stay in the go-kart centered nicely. In this case, I just feel them slightly rubbing on my calves. It's not really in the way. It's just barely obstructing my pedals. And that's only because my brake and gas are very close together on these particular pedals. But again, it's the positioning, it's the distance. And other than just putting my brake pedal a little more over there, this feels like my shifter cart back in the day. Now we can take it out on track and talk about how it actually performs. So I've got Kart Racing Pro fired up and just looking at the steering wheel on the screen versus mine, you can see here we are perfectly set up for go-karting. The distance is great, the position is great, and it matches what you see on the screen in a perfect way. They claim this rig, the Go-Kart Plus, will do a 12 newton meter wheel. That's what I've got on here now. I have it turned down a little bit because we're doing the live version of this show, but in testing, I had it cranked up all the way and it was remarkably strong. The center post, I showed you the amount of wiggle at its extremes. You feel none of that while driving. It feels like it is perfectly stable. It feels like it does not move whatsoever. And again, it gives you that absolutely perfect matching one-to-one -one go kart style. So if you're a go karter turned sim racer or a sim racer who has a passion for karting, or you're actually using sim racing for training, which is being done more and more every day, then this is gonna be really perfect for mimicking the position that you want and expect. When I look down to the pedal tray, the stiffness is actually remarkable. So I have the strongest pedals that I've ever used, that being my Rickmo Tech GT Pro Plus pedals. That hydraulic brake pedal takes more force than any load cell that I've ever tested. It is ridiculously strong and it tests the flex of a rig more than any pedal set that I could possibly put on it. So not only was the rig compatible and allowed me to just bolt them down, didn't have to even drill any holes, but with its angle adjustment, I'd be able to achieve any angle that I need. With its distance adjustment, I was able to get it at exactly the distance that I wanted them to be. And with these being very flat pedals, you can see that it really does, the, the rig handles the strength of that brake pedal really well you can see just maybe the slightest hint of lift at the heel deck area maybe just a little bit of a bow at the middle of the chassis but i can tell you that you do not feel that very much unless you're literally looking down concentrating on it and if you were on a more i dare say normal set of pedals it would actually not move whatsoever it is only because of how hard these pedals the amount of pressure they take which is exactly why i use them to test on rigs to see exactly what a rig is made of so despite the pedal deck or the wheel deck really really not being supported they just kind of are there on that lower single rail platform of the cart go-kart plus and they are still very very strong and with all sorts of adjustability. Now the seat itself, some people are gonna look at this and see a half a seat. It's only up to about my mid or three quarter way up my back. And depending on your bulk, depending on your size, that may prove to be comfortable or not so comfortable. In my case, I'm a little slim, so getting in and out of it is not that hard. I'm about a 32 waist, but if you were a 36 waist, you're gonna probably squeeze into this seat. And if you're a 40, I'm not sure you're gonna to wanna to get in and out of this seat. It's really gonna hook you in and lock you in like a go-kart seat does. The comfort, at this angle, I can actually drive like this all day long. I don't need a headrest. I don't need a shoulder rest. The shoulders are free, allowing me to turn the wheel very easily with no restriction on my shoulder blades, just like a go-kart feels like. In lieu of thick padding, what you have is contact area. So I am in contact from the very top of my thighs all the way to the upper portion of the seat, including the lower back. And with its rounded nature, it actually suits my back very well. I do a lot better with comfort in this seat, believe it or not, 
than I do in a full racing seat where my lower back doesn't even touch the bottom of the seat and it's just sitting there getting tighter all race long. I can actually drive for hours and hours and hours in this position. Maybe it's because I used to go-kart, maybe it's because I'm small, or maybe because it is just a little bit on the comfortable side. Overall, as a go-kart, if again, I'm playing Kart Racing Pro, if you're into karting sims, it's a no-brainer. This is one of the only go-karts that I've ever seen without them being hand-built from like a retired go-kart chassis. It handles the 12 Newton meters just fantastically. I just do find it to be ideal for a go-karting scenario. Now, if you're not a go-karter, this is an odd position. So if you're a GT racer, I would not recommend this position. If you're a formula racer, I would not recommend this position for the most ideal simulator positioning. So Next Level Racing claims that the Go-Kart Plus is adaptable from anyone from three foot seven up to six foot seven. And, for what, uh, and from what I've seen in the adjustments, I think that's very true. I think that's a, a generous statement and quite remarkable, maybe the biggest range of any rig that I've ever tested. But for me, I gotta say that is only true in the karting position. So this is adaptable to a semi GT or semi formula laydown position. And it, it does work. However, you gotta throw those measurements out the window. There's no way it's gonna accommodate a driver as tall as six foot seven in the GT position uh, properly. I mean, you can make it work, but they're gonna have that wheel down in their lap. I'm only five foot nothing. And when I drove it in GT position, I was able to get, let's say, eh, 85, 90% of where I wanted to be. But I still wanted the wheel to be higher, higher than this rig could accommodate. And therefore, if GT driving is your number one thing or formula driving, there's so many rigs to choose from. This is specific for karting. It will adapt for those who just wanna be able to do something different for the day. But ultimately, this is a karting simulator. And what it excels at, and I think what it really does best is allows a young driver, somebody who's still growing, and using go-karting to either prepare for a real life in motorsports or using go-karting to train for other forms of motorsport, that this is gonna not only do that driving position perfectly and naturally, but it's gonna adapt with them. They could be four foot tall, just a 12 year old kid, four foot tall in karting and graduate through classes of karting. And at the same time as they become five foot, five foot six, or even six foot plus, they're gonna be able to get those dimension changes out of this chassis and it will grow with them for many, many years. One of the best features the Next Level Racing Go-Kart Plus is the amount of adjustability, which is great because we talk about drivers from three foot seven up to six foot seven. We're also talking about a great variety of gears you heard in the compatibility list. And then we're also talking about drivers that might want to switch back and forth from karting to more of a GT style driving position. But in the pedal tray alone, not only do you have so many slots to be able to probably have some adjustment, maybe a few inches of being able to mount most of your pedals forward or backward, but then with just these simple tightening knobs, you have over nine inches of front to back adjustability as well. And then you have four settings. So right now I'm at the highest setting with the lowest setting of the four being completely flat. And then you just lock them down in place. It is that easy to make that adjustment on this and that much adjustability. When it comes to the wheel deck, it's a little more difficult. You do have to use the tools to undo the four bolts, two on each side. And you can see a bunch of different holes here that correspond with threaded spots in this upright post. It has about six, six and a half inches of up and down adjustability, which for the carding position works out great because the wheel is a little more vertical and the extension from the wheel base to the wheel rim actually adds to the height of the wheel. So when I use the Camus C5 rim, you could see that the wheel was much closer to the deck versus the Moza R12 setup, which extended it a few more inches, gaining it some height. You just had to push the seat back to accommodate it. You have six different positions. I can go one or two more extreme than I am here, and you can go all the way to a flat angle. 
So that's your adjustability, which as far as angle works, anywhere from GT to formula to even carding. Now, the seat. The seat has a lot of adjustability front to back. You've got the sliders here. So you've got a, quite a bit there to make an adjustment. And then you do have four on the front, three on the top, giving you a total of 12 different angle adjustments. So in the end, I found regardless of what gear I was gonna throw at the Go-Kart Plus, it was going to be able to accommodate it not only in installing it onto the rig without having to use any additional tools for the most part, and the adjustability to get everything where I needed it in a, in a Go-Kart style driving position. However, when I switched it over to a GT driving position, I did find it difficult to get the wheel high enough and I had to remove the washer to use the top two threaded bolt positions. Well, I think that gives you all the details or tells you everything that you need to know about the Next Level Racing Go-Kart Plus chassis. But to make it perfectly clear, you know me, I like to break things down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good. And that being, this is the only karting position chassis I've seen. Easy to assemble and adjust. Pre-drilled for all major hardware. Comes with caster wheels strong wheel deck, strong pedal deck, easy to get in and out, small footprint, can be carding or GT position-ish, best rig for children. And now on to the not so good. Well, it is a very specific application. Center post obstruction, realistic for carding. Would like the wheel deck to go a little bit taller. And now on to the bottom line, or as I like to think of it, who is this chassis really best for or built or designed for specifically? And the first thing that comes to mind for me is this is hands down the best child chassis that I've ever tested. Usually chassis are built for adults, so it's not so much that a child would outgrow their chassis, it's that most full-size chassis don't fit a child no matter what adjustments you make. You find yourself trying to put blocks on the pedal pedals or stacking a bunch of pillows to get them in the position and in the end either the wheels in their face or they still can't reach the pedals. This rig will adjust all the way down to a child's size and then as they grow allow you to make those adjustments and with this endless adjustments in the carting position I really feel it will accommodate that tall claim of six foot seven. I think it really will go that large in the carting position. Now with that said this is a karting chassis, and yes, it will do a GT position, but it definitely is not the best GT chassis in the world. I think it is one of the best karting chassis and the only one that I've tested on the show. Anything else I've ever even driven was a retired go-kart chassis turned sim racing chassis. So they did a great job there. Now, with real life motorsports turning to sim racing more and more each year, I think it's really important that karting has representation because that is where so many get their start. We do need better karting sims. There was a limited choice of sims to even test when using this rig. And we definitely need more sims like this. They're gonna take the beginner racer and for them, they're not gonna mind being in that karting position even when playing in a GT type car. For me, that's a little distracting, so I did focus more on karting sims but again even for your sprint car drivers this is going to be a great option as well so it is strong it is robust it is highly adjustable it is mostly karting specific and in that position it's really fairly comfortable as well so i think i've told you everything that you need to know about the next level racing go-kart plus chassis 699 dollars will get you one i do have a link to the gleam contest they are doing a giveaway so one of you lucky viewers might be able to win a chassis all the information you need is in the description of the show below and thank you for watching this is the sim pit i'm sean cole and i'll see you on the track